Dear viewers, in this video, we are going to discuss on the flow of the functional safety requirements. The flow starts with item definition. The item definition defines the realizable feature at the vehicle level. For example, cruise control is a feature used to maintain same speed during a long drive without using accelerator pedal. Item definition defines the functionality, interactions with other modules in vehicle and with the driver of the vehicle via user interaction. Item definition also defines the possible failure modes and its hazards. After item definition, hazard analysis and risk assessment will be performed. In this, each hazard will be analyzed based on scaling of severity which means how severe impact the hazard creates to human occurrence how the probability of failure occurrence changes based on the external environment and operation and controllability how easy or difficult to control by the driver of in case of failure iso 26262 provides a table to compute a cell level for each hazard based on these three parameters Next, safety goals. Safety goal is a top level requirement to avoid or mitigate hazard. Along with safety goals, we'll be getting SL level and FTTA values. FTTA value is its fault tolerant time interval, which is a time span between occurrence of a fault and occurrences of hazard. Next, System architecture. System architecture defines the interaction of system elements. Functional safety requirements defines the functional aspects of feature. This is derived from system safety architecture, safety goals, item definition, and HARA. Then technical safety requirements to prepare this. We need to consider functional requirement as a primary input. Then safety manual or assumptions of use. This will be considered for the third party hardware elements and software elements which are safety compliant in our system. This contains the requirements that need to be taken care of by the user or the integrator of the system. Next is safety analysis. ISO 26262 recommends two methods. One is FMEA and the second is FTA. FMEA is common for all the SIL levels. FTA is highly recommended for SLCND. Both these methods are used to identify causes of the failure and to recommend measures to address those failures. Then TSR need to consider the safety mechanisms to address cascading failures. Cascading failure is fault in one element led to another element to fail. In simple, faults cascaded from one element to other element. The failure occurs in three ways. In memory, in timing, and in communications. Then the DSR need to consider safety mechanisms to address common cause failures. Common cause failure is a fault in one element led more than one element to fail in other words more than one element failed due to a common cause for example a power supply crystal oscillator those are all the common cause in hardware and then tsr need to consider requirement for acyl decomposition acyl decomposition is a method of tailoring safety requirements when the requirements are not able to implement at the original SL level due to some constraints. In simple, this has two broad categories. One is QM requirement plus safety mechanism at original SL level. The second way is redundant implementation of safety requirements at the lower SL level. Once the TSR is ready, it will be allocated to software and hardware 
requirements that are allocated to hardware will be elaborated as hardware safety requirements requirements that are allocated to software will be elaborated as software safety requirements in this we also captured the legend which will explain who will be performing these activities we hope you understood the flow of the functional safety requirements thanks happy learning